GMOs basically began in the 1940s, yeah, in Europe. And what happened, uh, a musician went to a cafe and sat down and he bought his coffee and he's hearing music in the background. And part of the music was his songs. And so once he finishes, they bring him the bill and he's like, okay, I am paying for the coffee, it's not for free. But you're playing my music for free. And so he started wondering, how does this work? People are here enjoying the ambience, the music. It's my music, I'm getting nothing. And when I leave, you give me a bill. And so he started that movement to put together artists to start a CMO. This history has cascaded down to Kenya, where collective management organizations collect royalties on behalf of its members. A group of authors, owners of the works, yeah, can come together and um, register a CMO, then come to copyright board Kekobo. Uh, Kekobo is mandated to supervise. The Copyright Act says the principal objectives of collective management organizations are the collection and distribution of royalties and that only one collecting body can be registered for each class of rights and category of works. If you have a CMO representing uh, performers, we cannot license two representing performers because when they begin to do collections, there's going to be confusion. A copyright owner who is a member of a collective management organization is supposed to receive royalties collected for the use of their work. Copyright is owned by individuals who have put work into their ideas to turn it into an original character. You don't get copyright for an idea you have. You get copyright for a work that you have put down, fixed in a certain form. Um, your, the song that you're writing in your head cannot enjoy copyright. It needs to be in a CD somewhere out there in the market. That's what we call fixation. So that's what gives you copyright. The Copyright Act says literary, musical or artistic work is eligible for copyright after sufficient effort has been expended on making the work to give it an original character. Copyright registration is voluntary but has its benefits. Copyright helps you to control the use of your work so that you can gain economically from it, okay? How do you control? You control who reproduces your work. So there's communication to the public, there's distribution, there is adaptation, there's translation. If you sing your song in Kikuyu, and I want to sing it in Maragoli, you need to have control over that. Can I take your song, sing it in Maragoli, take it to Vihiga, and give it to my people? Piracy is, however, rife in Kenya's creative and art industry. The Copyright Act indicates infringement occurs if a person other than the author or someone authorized by the author reproduces, translates, adapts, performs, sells or hires out the work. But is the use of an infringed copy for personal use a crime? Who reproduced it for less money is the one who's committed the crime. You have bought it. Although you have aided the crime because you have not bought the original. Because the original is 200, so you have gone for the cheaper one. Meaning that me as an artist who is singing, you have denied me the 150. The Kenya Copyright Board advises creatives to protect their work, especially online, and be on the lookout for unauthorized use. When the burden is placed on the owner. You monitor your content, okay? Once you see there's an infringement, you give a takedown notice to the ISP. So the ISP is obliged to take down that content. The Copyright Act entitles an author of infringed works to pursue civil action against the infringing person and is entitled to injunctions to stop the infringing action, damages for loss suffered, or account for profits and or seizure of infringing copies. The next time you walk into a shop to purchase pirated music or movies, remember that you are aiding in a crime of copyright infringement and denying the copyright holder the much-needed revenue. Betty Kiptum, The Lou.